Churchill is often thought to have been a natural speaker. In fact, he found impromptu speaking difficult, and that was in part the result of a minor speech impediment, a lisp. Churchill had to apply extraordinary self-discipline to become the fine speaker with whom we are all familiar. And at the beginning of his parliamentary career, he learnt his speeches by heart. But in 1904, in the House of Commons, he lost the thread of his argument and had to sit down in the middle of his speech. After that, he brought with him copious notes in case he should suffer a further breakdown. His great friend, F.E. Smith, said that Churchill had devoted the best years of his life to preparing his impromptu speeches. <laughs> but every speech that Churchill made was the result of long and careful preparation. And even as wartime prime minister, he would devote time to preparing his speeches, believing that their inspirational qualities were a more important contribution to victory than executive or administrative work. And who can say that he was wrong? It is, however, fair to say that in his early years, Churchill struck many people as a somewhat bumptious and opinionated young man. And he tacitly accepts that view in his autobiography. He tells us that in, on his first day in India, in Bombay, he was invited to dinner by the governor at the government house. His Excellency, after the health of the Queen Empress had been drunk and dinner was over, was good enough to ask my opinion upon several matters, and considering the magnificent character of his hospitality, I thought it would be unbecoming in me not to reply fully. I have forgotten the particular points of British and Indian affairs upon which he sought my counsel. All I can remember is that I responded generously. There were indeed moments when he seemed willing to impart his own views, but I thought it would be ungracious to put him to so much trouble, and he very readily subsided. <laughs> a little later, one of Churchill's close friends said, the first time you meet Winston, you see all his faults, and the rest of your life you spend in discovering his virtues. <laughs> 